Hello, Ali. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for uh, meeting us for this interview uh, in your office, in the office of your company. What is the uh, name of the, of the company? It's Biohacker Center, mm -hmm. and this is also our kind of a biohacking center. So mm -hmm. it's in the middle of Helsinki, in the top floor, and we have all kinds of things that you can dwell into. So Biohacking Center, uh, it means that your uh, primary focus of interest is biohacking. Can you um, describe for the lay people audience what is biohacking? Yeah, so it's it's nothing mystical or even nothing new. It's kind of a new word for how I would put it in a larger scale is preventive health, preventive health care. So how you can keep yourself healthy and not only healthy, but thriving and energetic by using uh, biological, technological, natural tools and elements and nutrition and uh, mind uh, aspects, meditation and so on. And of course, sleep. So it, it's, it's, it's a basic things uh, that people have uh, kind of forgotten how to be healthy. So our, our uh, system and our body is, is actually designed to live for about 120 years without any disease but we get this ease because of the manifestations of, of uh, like different uh, mind realms and and so on so uh, the physical disease is always a manifestation of some kind of uh, disruption in, in the energies that we are currently in but um, uh, our handbook the biohackers handbook is uh, it's kind of a, like a missing manual for the human body I know there are like different kind of books, for example, from Michael Murphy, the the, um, the future of the body. future of the body I have in my shelf. And so that kind of um, has been like like a, uh, encouraging for me and for us to write this book with a different kind of approach, concentrating on basic things. So everybody needs to sleep, at least I I think so. Everybody needs to move not necessarily exercise, but move. Uh, everybody needs to eat, so you need a good nutrition. Everybody needs to work, at least uh, some kind of work. And everybody needs to think and take control of their minds and process their emotions and so on. So basic elements of human life. Uh, and we use the Pareto principle, which is like, what is the 20% what gives you the 80% of the mm -hmm. results? So four years of working the Biohackers Handbook, it's now also available in Russian, which is great. <laughs> yeah, this is why we came here to yeah. talk to you. So biohacking is, uh, seems like a complex term, which can be looked from different angles. And we'll come back to that, like how people with egocentric consciousness look at yeah. the biohacking, how people with like rational consciousness and so on. Sure. Um, and in Russia, uh, now, as far as I know, there's a trend of uh, viewing biohacking like biohacking, yeah. like this very <laughs> yeah. aggressive form of aug augmenting your yeah. cognitive skills and your physical, like uh, almost like testosterone. Like, yeah, implants. Uh, yeah. And so like, what is, yeah. In, in, how you sound is like it's more gentle, it's balanced way. Yeah. So can you comment on that? How, how, what is the difference and what is hacking uh, in that? What, yeah. what's, uh, yeah. How it boosts you? Of course, we are interested in boosting our efficiency in multiple lines of development, but also how it's more like a harmonic way of treating your uh, health and body. True. So what you described here is more like a fringe uh, approach to biohacking. Could be also biocracking. So if you think <laughs> about hackers in computer science, they're actually doing good stuff, good things, and the crackers are those who are like breaking into the FBI and, and stuff like that. So uh, we have a more gentle, more natural approach on that. So those are kind of uh, 
like cutting edge technologies that um, people need to master first their like basic stuff. So if you're not sleeping, for example, enough and you're waking up all the time, it doesn't matter what you, if you infuse yourself with some vitamins or, or stuff like that, it's not going to fix that basic thing. So we concentrate a lot on these basic traits of how, how to be a human body, a human being, a mind, and how to really like optimize these basic things. Then you can go on further and implement some like uh, nuanced like supplements or different kind of like specific technologies and so on. So there are like also stage of development in, in this kind of thing. So and also uh, taking into account of your integral psychograph, which you have also described in the book, and uh, being aware of where you stand on these different de developmental lines, you can concentrate on things that you're not necessarily so developed. So, and you you mentioned this integral psychograph, and one of well the primary reason we are here uh, and shooting this interview for Eros and Cosmos, our online magazine. Yeah. is that you're probably the pioneer of uh, in using integral framework and Wilbur's integral framework uh, in, uh, by, uh, in applying it towards biohacking. Yeah, that's probably probably mm -hmm. true. And that's um, back in 2010-11 when uh, I did my integral studies in JFK, um, I had this kind of vision of a book, but not like any integral book, but something that's um, revolved and uh, tied around health and performance and stuff like that. So I haven't found any a good book on, on that's, that's covering all these things. And then uh, uh, back in 2013, I met Demo Arena, really like futurist renowned speaker uh, globally, Leonardo Da Vinci uh, Award mm -hmm. laureate and, and stuff like that. He, he came to my doctor's office appointment and he said that uh, I'm actually healthy but here's how I healed myself. And he had this like matrix that looked like an integral uh, type of approach on, on, on uh, how to heal yourself. And I was like, okay, there's now there's something with And uh, after two months, we had uh, the first uh, biohacking and quantified self meetup here in this office. This looked uh, pretty different <laughs> back in then. And we had our first event in, in June. After that, and in the summer of 2013, we decided, okay, let's write the book. So my um, kind of perspective and uh, view on things has changed a bit. So I was like all integral and, and just like integral, 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 and read all the Wilbur's books. And but I kind of um, detached myself from it and started to see even like larger things and. Uh, but the understanding and, and the key mapping and the occult, uh, the, you know, that and it's, it's been in the process of writing the book like all the time. Yeah, so, so. it's like kind of a context. Yeah. Um, what would you say, how does um, integral aqual framework augment the biohacking uh, practices? How does it uh, make it, does it make it better or does it make it more holistic? How, what is your point? What is yeah. your perspective? It, it does make it better, but um, unfortunately there are quite a few people who understand the framework. But uh, that's not the point. The point is how you can present these things to different uh, types of people, to different uh, people in different developmental stages, how you can speak to all these kind of people by changing the language. So the language we use in the book is uh, designed that almost everybody can read it. It's compre comprehensive enough, but it's still simple enough that it gets through you, even though if you would be in, in the lower developmental stages and uh, your understanding of the topic would be not, not like that great. So it's kind of finding the golden middle pathway the area medicritus in Latin. So that's been always my approach on things. How can, how can I speak to as many people as possible with an understandable way? So does this integral map help you to speak into as many people as possible? Yeah, yeah. And especially when I do like keynotes and speaking uh, engagements, mm -hmm. I always analyze the audience and, and 
what's their capable capability of reception and their like previous knowledge so i attune my language into like reach reach the people and the message so it sounds like it's not just biohacking it's uh, almost like an integral hacking of reality right for sure yeah, yeah. that's that's what it is um, we are living in in this matrix and try to navigate it as, as well yeah. as possible and in your book you you use uh, references to different de developmental models uh, different lines of development and stages of development can sure. you say specifically like a few uh, examples how it's important for biohacking yeah for example you can think about the kinesthetic line uh, we have a huge chapter on exercise and movement so those are kind of like basic things how you can delve for yourself in there also um, the ego development how you can like become ego conscious and and so on and i think there are multiple lines development lines that you can go through and uh, you get a lot of help with this book social intelligence and, and different kind of intel intelligent traits and uh, it's it's just just to um, give people more understandment and more like okay there are actually these kind of things okay i can actually develop my worldviews or whatnot and uh, i don't um, assume that people like get it like all the way to the top but just to give ideas that there are different things that we can develop in ourselves and you point probably the importance of consciousness dimension to biohacking yeah that's huge that's huge it's I, I think everything begins with the consciousness because that's that's like the basic trait there is what's what's the state of your consciousness at the, this uh, present time of course it changes a bit but it affects everything else so everything, yeah. consciousness and energies and uh, biological processes are probably very interconnected in you yes in, indeed they are so um, we have a, like this is like the basics yeah. Biker's Handbook. The next book we are uh, writing is going to be about resiliency, mm -hmm. how to be a resilient human being. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be integrating a lot of more stuff in there like uh, trauma hacking mm -hmm. and uh, shadow work and mm -hmm. like more of this ego hacking, but also uh, stress. We actually have um, published Biker's Stress book in mm -hmm. Finnish. But we decided because it's a lot smaller book that we yeah. are going to be integrating it into the next book that's going to be taking to the next level of of biohacking so the book is available internationally right like in different languages not just the English, handbook yeah yeah it's um different languages uh now the russian one has been like the first official yeah. foreign language uh, besides English mm -hmm. but there are like guys who've been translating by themselves to Ukrainian yeah. and also to Spanish uh, yeah. the Slovenian and, and stuff like that and we have been selling to over 60 countries mm -hmm. in the world it's still quite small the, the numbers of the sales mm -hmm. but uh, the feedback and, and it's amazing and heartwarming to get this feedback mm -hmm. from all over the world like what countries Brazil like uh, Russia Kazakhstan mm -hmm. like you know everywhere even in South Africa and, and like what people tell you what's feedback oh it's it's a uh, yeah the, the common feedback is that this is what we have been missing this is what we need oh. this is what we need uh, to battle against like the the big pharma and, and mm -hmm. these big corporations that are have been ruling the health scene mm -hmm. for decades and this is what people need to keep themselves healthy and, and uh, to let them return their responsibility for themselves exactly right? that's yeah that's a that's a huge that's a keyword in there mm -hmm. to take responsibility of your own health and your mm -hmm. own life when you take responsibility of your health you take responsibility of your life too and then you can go even mm -hmm. further and further and then, okay i okay i have these kind of uh, interesting traumas that have been like pushing from the shadow and I get these emotional reactions in different things so then you have more kind of room for also developing these and move forward as a human being and so um, your company is probably since you're a founder or co-founder yeah co-founder with yeah. Demo, Demo Arena 
Yeah, so you're a co-founder of this company, so it's kind of an emergent uh, property of your activities, of your team. Yeah. And we can start with uh, speaking first with, uh, about you, you personally, your personal integral by hacking practice, and then we can go into how it evolved into this uh, business of yours. So uh, can you tell about how do you personally apply this by hacking ideas to your uh, real life practice? Yeah, so uh, it's been developing this past, I would say maybe like 10-15 years. So uh, to go a little bit, bit back in time, I, I've been like kind of like workaholic and I used to do like almost 100 hours per week, like being on call. Like I, I was literally on call about five years straight. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the integral studies back in 2010, I decided, okay, now it's time to stop. Now it's time to stop torturing myself and uh, even before that became like all kinds of forms of meditation and uh, I've been always interested in nutrition but f I wasn't sleeping enough. Uh, my sleep quality was bad so that was like the first thing I was concentrating on fixing and I was like quite exhausted all the time and had some uh, gut issues and, and stuff like that so I've been also healing myself from within and that's also about what integral medicine is about. You first have to heal yourself to be a healer. So uh, that's been my approach in this. But move uh, forward to this date, uh, I do a lot of things just to keep my energy levels up and my body and mind very clean. So um, I can give you an example of what I do <laughs> during a sure, day. Sure, yeah. So people are always asking about yeah. this. Yeah, so um, I try to wake up without mm -hmm. an alarm clock, mm -hmm. if, if possible, and then I know that I get the right amount of sleep. Of course, I and track sleep yes. with the Oura Ring, yeah. Garmin and uh, Biostrap. So I like to have different kind of data from different angles. I'm not like, I can sleep totally without any device, but the it's cool. The sleep thing is very important, <laughs> sorry for interrupting you, but no, um, yeah. since you live in Helsinki, and many people live like in cities like St. Petersburg, even Moscow. The light, um, uh, the exposure to light is very limited. Yeah. So how do, it's probably your approach is very attuned to this uh, dark places of uh, how we live, how it affects this sleep, uh, sleeping and waking cycles. It does affect a lot. So in the summer, it's actually might be a bit, bit harder because it's so bright to so late that you might kind of miss the optimal window of going into sleep, but I'm not stressing about that. But in the winter time, uh, in the mornings and even in the days, I take, take a lot of like bright, bright white light, what we have here in the studio also. But also I did uh, do, I do a red light therapy, I have mm -hmm. this uh, panel. So mm -hmm. I shoot my face with red light about five minutes. So that's even mm -hmm. better than coffee. And I kind of create the light waves that come naturally from the sun, but when the sun is not available, mm -hmm. I have to create for myself technologically. So I use the bright white light to adjust the biological clocks mm -hmm. with the, the, via the eyes. Then I use this red light and infrared light therapy. I go to infrared sauna every morning to get a little mm -hmm. sweat and like a warming effect. Mm -hmm. And then I hit the cold, very cold shower just to really, really wake my nervous system up. and. Um, I hydrate myself. Hydration is, is always the key with minerals and stuff. And I usually fast, like do intermittent fasting like mm -hmm. every day. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent means that you're not fasting like many days, but you are fasting a good portion of the day. Let's say, for example, 16 to 20 hours. Mm -hmm. And you have a restricted time for feeding yourself. And that's been crucial for uh, gut health and also like the have a clear mind and a lot of energy in the mind. You are kind of in a state of ketosis where you use fatty acids and ketones uh, as an energy fuel. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more effective than glucose, mm -hmm. what people are mostly used to. So I, I like to do all these things and it takes me about one hour and 15 minutes every morning to do these routines. And then I'm like super ready for the day, a lot of energy. And uh, I don't work like 10 hours per day. I might work like four hours per day, 
and then I have time for my family and exercise and uh, I, I take 12 hours per day just to recover and, and you know, have, have it Enjoy easy. life. Enjoy life, for sure, yeah. yeah. A four-year-old daughter and uh, she, she has a lot of energy, so I need to keep up with her. And when you work, you also um, uh, are very mindful about how you work. Like we saw your yeah. standing standing posture. Can you speak about that? How you? Yeah, posture is uh, hugely important. We can talk about ergonomics. Uh, ergonomics is also kind of a broad concept. Mm -hmm. Many people think that it's it's only about like posture. You are yeah. aligned with your body, but it's also about cognitive ergonomics. So how does your workstation look like? Are there like a lot of disruptions? Um, do you have a, like a good uh, setup for that you can get easily into the flow? And also organizational uh, ergonomics. How is your workplace? How are your co-workers? And so on. So I, I think about in different aspects and different levels kind of uh, organizing myself to um, let me self work very efficiently. And uh, I use this Pomodoro technique, so I keep micro breaks and uh, macro breaks. And uh, I might put even like a watch here, mm -hmm. so that might be a time when I can be dis disturbed next time. Mm -hmm. So I need to, especially if you write, you need to get mm -hmm. into this flow state that nobody is, is coming to you. The states of consciousness are also a very interesting topic. So you, sp you spoke prior to interview about the importance of the flow state. And now you mentioned yeah. it, so can you speak about what is the flow state for you and how you reach it? Yeah, we have uh, in the book uh, a lot about the flow state in the work section, work part. Uh, there are cer certain um, flow inducers that you can do, like um, have, have a, like a good um, routine on those two. Uh, for example, I use certain kind of uh, sound waves. I use Brain FM to create that really like a focused uh, atmosphere and then it's also blocking all the noise, external noise. Mm -hmm. um, I have certain like supplements when I take to improve the cognitive functions and uh, especially the prefrontal cortex. I can use light therapy uh, like through my nose and in here what I mm -hmm. show you. So uh, these small kind of things they prime myself to go into the flow state easily. For example certain music I know that will take me there like like this. So I use a lot of sound and music, actually. Can you speak about this uh, using sound? We know we spoke with you about brainwave entrainment, some other sound entrainment. Can you speak your approach to these uh, techniques and using music uh, in general? Yeah, uh, the brainwave ent entrainment has been developing quite a bit. So I began using like binaural beats back in, I think, 2006 and seven. So I've been using some kind of binaural beats um, device or app or sound uh, for years. So for example, I did all the um, Holosync. Have you ever heard of yes, uh, Holosync? Yes. So I did the whole program like <laughs> back in 2006 and seven, and it lasted for many years. So that was, that was great. Uh, I like certain kind of um, like a progressive uh, trance or psychedelic trance kind of music. Uh, that that's hypnotic and it's repeating so mm -hmm. they're like repeating things so that's that's when your brain gets like into this uh, flow I would say flow is good for for that mm -hmm. so not too disturbing music not not singing but just like hypnotic repeating and uh, loops how, and how does it feel like uh, the flow state for you you forget yourself you you're kind of like immersed and um, being one with the work that you're actually doing, you're not, it's kind of like a, I don't know if the egoless state is a good word, but you're, you're not really yourself, you're just the work that's being done at the moment. And then you might suddenly like come out of it and you're like, okay, uh, what's the time? And you might realize it's been three hours, you'll be like in, in this flow state. So that's definitely an altered state yeah. in, in the normal like beta brainwave consciousness. Mm -hmm. So um, everything that, that you can get in the more theta and, and, and alpha, they're always helpful for creative work. Mm -hmm. So uh, and now we're we coming to this intersection with your business, but 
for you personally, what is the, um, you know, like a vision, like a grand vision that you, like the purpose of your all these activities, what, what, what is it mm. for? Uh, the big vision is to help people to thrive and take care of themselves, take responsibility of their health and not to be like uh, relying on, on just the medical care system. So my big vision is to create this preventive healthcare system like globally and it's it, the biohacking is a crucial part of that. And then we have the sick care system. That's it's, it's named healthcare system, but, mm -hmm. but actually it's a sick care system because people go there when they're sick. Mm -hmm. That's also needed, but if we can prevent a lot of these chronic diseases that people really don't need, and they're just a reflection of, of their way of living, uh, what they're eating, how they're thinking, uh, what's their environment and so on, just to give people opportunities to be more like healthy and, and so that they don't need even the sick care system. So that's the big, big vision. And I think it's now it's, it's a, the perfect time for that. I agree with you. So the biohacking center, uh, can you tell about uh, what is it uh, activities? How, what are the, some of the, uh, per, uh, some of the primary activities of the biohacking center? Sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a biohacker center. Biohacker, so, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Because there is actually a biohacking center also in Finland okay. that's been uh, um, put together by a good friend of mine mm -hmm. called Mikko. But he has these flo flotation tanks and like mm -hmm. even more stuff <laughs> that's, that's in here. So it's a biohacking, so this is a biohacker center. But we do uh, events. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had 10 biohacker summits already mm -hmm. and uh, we just had the five-year anniversary in Helsinki back in November. Mm -hmm. It was huge, uh, about uh, over 1,100 people from, from 40 different countries. It was How sold many? out, 40. And it's a, uh, we have, it, it's a multiple day <laughs> event. We have a, like Optimus Day workshop for about 30, 40 people. We have uh, the upgrade dinner where you cook, cook yourself like a six course dinner of, of biohacked ingredients, like super pure natural ing ingredients. Then the, um, the, final, the summit is two days. It is like on site, not online or both? It's on site for sure, but yeah. you can view it online mm -hmm. if, you, if you would like. And it's, it's, it's a, I would call it like an integral health mm -hmm. summit because there's a lot of art and music and different kind of themes and you can try these things yourself if you would like and or if you just like to listen and learn and, and like a lot of things we have a, like a thermogenic spa outside so you have cold and uh, like different kind of saunas in there and just to get this um, immersive experience what it actually is and also the vibe is very very loving and uh, I would say even like spiritual in the sense that uh, people who come there, they actually want to be there and they're kind of uh, reflecting the same resonance of, of energies. And so that's one huge thing. The next one is actually we're going to be having in Amsterdam in 2020 and the team is Hack the Ego. It's in June, right? In June, uh, mm -hmm. 5th and 6th of June. Uh, yeah, that's one part. Uh, that's mainly Temu, Temu mm -hmm. Arena's uh, responsibility. Uh, my responsibility is all the content all the books, all the web courses, like um, lectures online and, and so on. We have a lot of, we have produced a lot of material. Uh, mm -hmm. Also a lot of in Finnish, but now more so in English. Uh, for example, we are coming up with uh, Biohacking for Women web course. Our next book is uh, Biohacker's Brain Food Guide, uh, targeted specially for, for your optimizing your brain. So a lot of things are, are coming up. Uh, and then we have uh, the online store. Uh, we just immersed with uh, Live Healthy from uh, Amsterdam and Holland uh, called uh, Edward de Wild. So it's going to be a biohackers online store after that. And uh, the, the idea is just to give people information, uh, but also practical tools and events where you go and things what to buy, for example, supplement wise or food wise or you have different gadgets and technologies and for example I show you so do the light machine I I use daily so you put up uh, some infrared light into your nose so it goes into your brain and but they also have these 
things coming like transcranial. So it's transcranial photo biomodulation and all kinds of cool things. So um, just to integrate, the, the knowledge is good, but if you don't know how to do it, then, then it's not enough. So That's yeah. a big question, you know, I like how you showed it. Just to integrate all this diversity of uh, techniques, of technologies, of consciousness stuff into yeah. a unified system and which is applicable directly to you. Exactly, uh, and you're your own master. This is like a, the N equals one experiment <laughs> for everybody. Of course, you need some like epidemiological data and, and like uh, collective data on things, but you're still an individual and what works for you might not work for me or for her. Or, so you need to experiment with yourself. And Do you consult people individually for these uh, things or how? Yeah, I have, have a remote consultation mm -hmm. available. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I do a few things, uh, might be more even in the future, but I think <laughs> the time uh, invested in one-on-one -on -one consultation is not at this point of time um, worth, uh, because I need to like work on things to create more this platform and, and mm -hmm. new stuff. So, <laughs> but I also like to do one-on-one -on -one consultation, but um, uh, as a a uh, doctor who takes patient, I quit that thing in one and a half years ago, mm -hmm. just to fully concentrate on this. Perfect. So, mm, uh, w when we went here to this biohacker center, uh, we met uh, some members of your team. Yeah. And uh, they went to watch the Star Wars, the new Star yeah, Wars movie. they're all there. <laughs> yeah, while we are here doing our work and we are happy that they're watching their movie and we are happy that here we are doing our work like doing this interview which is yeah. actually not just work but also much fun but can you t uh, speak about them what kind of team you have what kind of spirit in the team mm. like what kind of uh, uh, you know, vi vibration of your team yeah it, I, I would say it's high, high vibration and uh, people are here from their own will so many of our, of our workers have actually been volunteers in, in the summits and they've been like fans of our work for a while and now they have an, the opportunity to work here. So everybody's really motivated and uh, lo lots of love and we are sharing like the same values and energies. Of course, everybody's individual, but we have a, it's, it's a, I would say it's family, like energetic mm -hmm. family that resonates really, really well, especially with Temu and Jaakko and or like the co-authors, but also all, all of the other other uh, guys and girls in our team. So we have a good uh, like a social media team. They are like doing super amazing work. We have a good marketing team and also the content team. So you met Inka, who's uh, about to be graduated uh, as a psychologist from Aberdeen University in Scotland. She's super smart in writing. And so I'm, I'm really grateful that uh, we can produce some more content so it was, she's really into this different levels and stages and states of, of mind like immersed in, in the psychology um, yeah then we have um, like uh, the graphic team or, or the arts who create the arts so the arts for the um, book are created yeah. by your team right yeah Lotta is uh, mm -hmm. she's she's the the main um, producer of all the all the content it would be nothing without all these in illustrations and to make it like a beautiful piece of art so I, I see that as a piece of art also that it's not just another book but you actually want to look look at it and, and get immersed into that yeah so uh, you also spoke that uh, you uh, one of the uh, important members of your team is in Tallinn right so you're represented in different yeah. cities and different countries even yeah, uh, our future companies are now being like uh, put together in, in Tallinn, so mm -hmm. in Estonia. We have uh, like four new companies like divided into these kind of different mm -hmm. realms of like uh, the online and uh, the content and, and the events and so on. So uh, yeah, Demo lives there, but he also comes here very often. And Demo is like the mastermind of running the whole show. So he's really like running the whole show and putting up all these companies and he's, he's been like a serial entrepreneur for from the year of 16 
when uh, he it's a, he he's a, like super interesting guy you should also <laughs> interview him yeah but he he like uh, teached in school mm-hmm. when he was actually a student mm-hmm. himself in there so he's been always like very super intelligent super bright and um, he's a global speaker and speaking all over the world all the time and teaching people about the future and technology so and Jako on the other hand uh, He's like the super nature guy who's been like going through all the possible um, medicinal herbs and, and uh, like really dive deep into the nature. And he spends like his time most mostly in the nature. And, and uh, so we have a good like combination of different kind of energies and, and uh, information and understanding. So probably one of the final or one of the final uh, inquiries is uh, about the future mm, so you're using integral aqual framework developed by ken wilber and his colleagues and you mentioned like for instance uh, sean hargens one of the yeah. representatives there are many other people you're probably um, taking the best practices from many other fields and dimensions sure so what is your vision of the Mm, a future of the zone of uh, development, like there's a term by Russian psychologist uh, um, Vygotsky, zone of proximal development, like the zone of nearest development, and maybe uh, the for- uh, foresight of the farthest development. What do you think, where it all goes? What is the potential, future potential of biohacking, biohackers' uh, practices? Yeah, um, I was kind of starting to think about this uh, second tier and third tier, so it's, everything comes into uh, the global and consciousness of, of the whole earth and it's, it's raising like super rapidly at, at this moment and people are like waking up like mushrooms in the, in the rain. So that's also a, a reflection of where the biohacker and the biohacking is going through. So it's, it's becoming more like self-aware and the realizations that we are actually the one and the same uh, living in this organism in this this planet and we to we need to like not only develop ourselves but develop the whole whole community so this this is actually helping people also to raise their consciousness so when you're taking good care of your sleep good care of your nutrition good care of your body it has an immediate effect also on your consciousness because uh, this is the vehicle that we are like navigating in in this plane at this moment so i see that it's uh, I kind of see it, it with the Moore's law, you yeah. know, the Moore's law of technology. So it, it goes like this. So we have been building this for about five years, and now it's it's coming rapidly into consciousness of more and more people, and they are ready to take on this uh, knowledge and information. So that's my bigger view on this. On the one hand, uh, people speak about like Ray Kurzweil of singularity. Sure. On the other hand, you know seeing how different countries develop, uh, it seems like the technologies go slower than it was uh, thought by Eric Kurzweil, that uh, I know there's some skepticism about it. I personally, uh, like, I like those ideas and I'm skeptic because they don't take uh, into account consciousness part and culture part. But if reef, if you, you are to riff about uh, the singularity and biohacking, what would it be? How does this singularity trend in technologies can affect and uh, transforming uh, humans into like some kind of cyborgs, mm. uh, cyber, uh, cybernetically enhanced organism? How yeah. does it uh, sound to you? There are some uh, ethical problems. So <clears throat> that kind of changes what's what does it mean to be a human being? Yeah. Because if you're not the human being, or rather you are like a cybernetic or cyborg being, of course there are different kind of beings, and we might be even developing as a species into a totally new, new way. And uh, eventually, that's probably gonna go. Uh, and and when you're gone through this um, this vehicle and this physical plane, you don't need this body after that and then you go into different dimensions and, and uh, stages and states so i don't know where it's going i'm just uh, watching really like curiously how these things are developing but of course the ethical sites are always there and we need to think about these uh, i'm not going 
into whole all naturalism or into just all this singularity but but the some it's somewhere in the middle we still need to be humans and um, but in a sense we are already like cyborgs we are or using these kind of things that nobody could have imagined like 30 years ago or maybe some some people and uh, we have technology that we can like uh, see like deeper into into stuff and or we can for example what Elon Musk is doing I follow his work quite like, quite closely so like the Neuralink and things like that so I think many think about if we can put our consciousness into the internet yeah. but uh, that's something that I cannot grasp on at this moment because it's so complicated that we no know anything about it yet. So. What would be your take on Neuralink? I think it's uh, very could be very helpful for people with serious illnesses mm -hmm. but <laughs> I think there's the line so uh, at this moment I, I wouldn't want want to put my brain on the internet. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> it kind of is, is there already, but uh, it kind of reminds me of the movie Limitless. Yeah. So then you would actually become limitless if you have all the information all the time. What, what would we do? What would it do to this day consciousness? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you had like all the information all the time. Yeah. That movie is both inspiring and terrifying. Yeah. And this is about the integral that uh, on the one hand, we are all, always pursuing the breakthrough technologies and insights and always chasing the evolutionary cutting edge. And at the sure. same time, there's always this uh, side of caution of being balanced and taking into account all the different spheres, lines, levels of end states. Right? Exactly, exactly. And, and there's always the dark side. Yeah. There's light and there's always the dark side. So we have to because it's so it would be so easy to go into the dark dark side and and how to keep yourself in the middle but also recognizing that there is this dark side and we need to work on that but also that we go towards the light so i'm certain this is an it would be an ongoing conversation and i hope to be yeah. returning we are, we are planning to return to talk about the biohackers for women uh, uh, project uh, maybe sure. in uh, very soon we'll record this conversation but also maybe as you evolve and your understanding evolves uh, we would be happy to participate in this dialogue and uh, to see where the future would lead us and w where we can uh, how we can shape our own future so thank you very exactly. much for this conversation and uh, you're doing a very very important work I thank think um, applying these integral and holistic ideas of balancing all this, uh, what what Ken Wilber calls quadrants, levels, lines. Sure. It's yeah. like it's a cutting edge. It's like uh, the very breakthrough uh, thing that happens now in the humanity. So it's great that uh, here in Helsinki we have this biohacker center, and you're you're doing this important work. Thank you. Yeah.